Art and Human Rights from Slavery to Guantanamo. We had a wonderful afternoon and evening last uh, uh, yesterday, a uh, very dynamic, uh, thought-provoking conversation on Guantanamo and many other uh, sites uh, centered on Michael Ratner's uh, uh, presentation and visit. Uh, on that table, there are two very interesting uh, documents I've been asked to direct your attention to on um, uh, the work of the Center for Constitutional Rights, uh, of great interest to all of us. Uh, we begin today uh, with a continuing roundtable on the nature of memorial politics, and uh, this also allows the museum to public memory. Uh, students who didn't have a chance to hear from Julian Bonder yesterday to hear from him. Julian Bonder, as many of you know, uh, is a distinguished uh, architect, a public artist, and cultural theorist. Uh, we'll be hearing about some of his work, and not only his ideas about Guantanamo, which he shared with us yesterday, but really his, his new and ongoing projects. And then after that, we'll have a, com a chance for um, uh, some of us, including my colleague Cindy Cohen, to uh, raise some questions, uh, pr promote a sort of enduring conversation. Uh, Julian has to be on the road to teach by 1 o'clock, so this will be compressed, and then we'll go on to some of the graduates and presentations in the rest of the session. So Julian will turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks uh, so much, Mark, uh, for the invitation. And it's, uh, it's good to be here. Uh, and uh, I, would, I, I, I apologize uh, because I will have to really leave. Uh, it's not something that I like to do at all, but I have uh, various commitments that I couldn't, uh, the second day of classes, and I cannot leave my design students uh, uh, for, for, for this particular day. So I hope uh, you will apologize. Uh, we would accept my apologies for that, and, and I'll try to go, it's a very compressed presentation, but there will be lots of images, uh, and uh, what I'd like to do is to, to present to you some ideas about uh, how we approach, or how I approach, this question of public space and memory, uh, centering on, on a number of projects, but I'll, I'll go very, very quickly through some concepts, okay? So, uh, as uh, change, this is, this is something that is, that is interesting and important. The act of remembering is always in and of the present, while the reference is of the past, uh, and it's absent. So how we deal with this, this notion that uh, what we do relates to those absences this is, a, this is a big question. Uh, and the second point that if we, if we leave a, a one line here would be this one. Society is the miracle of moving out of oneself. And this is Emmanuel Levinas, French philosopher, that you may have read or may have heard about. Uh, let's leave these uh, two issues on our minds for a moment. So as changing events and circumstances unveil in present time, a memorial historic destiny is to preserve memory of the past and provide conditions for new responses. As our psychopolitical uh, and ethical companions. Memorials should function as environments for thinking through past and present and to rethink and to reactualize the past. In our work with Christoph Odichko, Director of Visual Arts at MIT, we believe that memorials should encourage new critical consciousness, committed memory work, and possibilities for ourselves and new generations to find engagement towards a better world. The world memorial corresponds to commemoration, which is something that serves to preserve uh, the memory or knowledge of individual or events, but also corresponds to the world memento, which is something that serves to warn, to remind, uh, with regard to f future events as well. So we provide, a memorial may provide connection between past, present, and future. Uh, uh, so this is a, a, you see some images and you will read, you, you'll be able to read what the projects are. I'm not going to be describing the images or talking about the images. They will help uh, guide the, the, the presentation. Uh, so the one question that we ask, is it possible to conceive memorials that focus on this idea of warning as key element that triggers our thinking of both past and future? Uh, how do we approach these questions? Can we build memorials that address and honor perhaps victims, survivors, society. How do we contribute to collect, uh, to, to frame collective and spontaneous acts of remembrance? How can we make spaces that demand proactive engagement? 
Since the 80s, Western societies have developed an obsessive pursuit of memory. In its many forms, is a marker in contemporary culture. Uh, historiography, psychoanalysis, you know, public landscapes, architecture, have all been marked by this notion of memory. What is this? The pursuit is present, not only in the way real pasts and mythic, mythic pasts are presented in global culture. So these are images of projections and monuments. I may be able to show one or two uh, a bit later in the presentation. So this is a question, you know, that, 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 that we try to pursue, you know, how can we attempt to make space for the voices of others to speak? The pursuit of memory is present in a way real pasts and, uh, and, and mythic pasts are represented, remembered, and, forgot, and forgotten. But think about this, architecture and memory were always connected through times, from monuments to ruins, you know, contemporary buildings, uh, they become part of our culture. Andreas Huysen suggests that this obsessive pursuit of memory may be an indication that our thinking and living temporality is undergoing a significant shift. A shift that has to do with time and space and has to do with expanding horizons of time and space beyond what we call local. An important aspect of this culture of memory may be found in the way the struggle for justice and human rights and remember of traumatic events uh, have been in many instances coupled as nations seek to create democratic societies in the wake of histories of mass exterminations, apartheid, military dictatorships, this is from where I come from in Buenos Aires, and totalitarianism. Construction of museums and memorials that dot the globe seems significant in the sheer vastness and magnitude of our number, but also as well in the significance that the sites of memory have for affected communities. Examples are the creation of official and community-based memorial spaces, the emergence of spontaneous memorials, this is in Belarus, in which recent and very, very, uh, uh, and, and tragedies that happen you know, far away in time and in place, Pilgrimage to sites of memory, like uh, Auschwitz or other places. Uh, uh, this culture, let's say, this is, this is kind of part of this culture of memory that is dotting the globe all around. And we have to contend or deal with it in various ways. The uses of memory, political uses, are varied. But I want to emphasize this. At the core, these uses, and many times abuses, always remain tied to histories of specific communities, nations, and states. So while residues of mythical meta-narratives, histories of victors and self-aggrandizing monuments, which in, the 20, which in the 19th century served to legitimize the idea of nation-state, you know, think of them all, these mythical memories are present in, in, in present day, but these cultures have also become infiltrated by what you could call repressed group memories, subverted by forgotten micro-histories, by the appearance of, those, appearance of those vanquished others, by those who bear witness to personal historical traumas, and by transformation into, of monuments into monument others. This is from my university, the 200 people who disappeared from the School of Architecture, where I studied in Buenos Aires.